Without further ado, we are fortunate to have Penny Som, Jessica Joyce, and Jermaine Murray with us today. Penny Som is a continuous process improvement professional with current emphasis in the transportation field. Her focus is on employee mentoring, training, and development to drive continuous improvement, leading to improved productivity, throughput, and employee engagement. Jessica Joyce worked for the Port of Seattle Marine Maintenance for 24 years, starting as entry-level administrative support, and now as a senior manager of operations, systems, and logistics. She has been involved in lean process improvement initiatives for about eight years, almost since the beginning of when the port started implementing it. The port's workforce is diverse in the activities they're involved in. Jessica is focused on ensuring that all voices are heard in process improvement efforts. Jermaine Murray is the director of Port Construction Services. He has 27 years of military and work experience, including nine years with Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway, including supervision experience in various operational and rail improvement projects. He has been at the port for 11 years. Jermaine earned an associate degree in technology, a bachelor's in science and business management, a master's in business administration, and his professional commercial building inspector license. Jermaine has become very vocal in the fight for equality against racism and strives to be a vulnerable leader who encourages others to speak up. Encouraged by Ray Lewis, Hall of Fame football player and motivational speaker, Jermaine too has learned to deal with pain and loss. Take it away, Penny, Jessica, and Jermaine. Thank you so much, Rachel. And we're so glad to be here today. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. And today we're gonna to talk about our Lean Champion Leaders Program, where the shift begins. And thank you for being here. First off, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Port of Seattle. So we have two lines of business that we mainly focus in. Uh, one is our maritime side. If you're in the Seattle area, you know you'll see fishing boats and cruise lines. And our statewide commercial fishing and related industries produce 10 billion in business revenue. We have approximately, I think, uh, Jessica, maybe you can confirm, 37 miles of waterfront we're responsible for. That's, that's pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. Great, thank you. And then we have our airport side. So SeaTac Airport is also the responsibility of the Port of Seattle. And the economic impact on the airport side is 22.5 billion in total business revenue. It gives 87,300 direct jobs to the, to the um, local areas. We deal with 46.8 million passengers and 415 million in state taxes reflecting direct and secondary activities. So the Port of Seattle has quite a responsibility in our area as far as income and job building and equity, diversity, and inclusion. One of the things that we do at the port in my department is process improvement which is directly tied to strategic initiatives, um, is about 10 years ago, we had an executive leader who decided that process improvement at the port could really become an initiative to build our process improvement muscle that would really help us become a high, uh, even better high-performing organization. And so uh, approximately 10 years ago, they hired one person to come in with a lean background and to start process improvement initiatives. We also hired a consultant at that time, and we started in one area, our aviation area. Approximately 2,200 employees now, so it was probably under 2,000 employees at that time, and really was trying to focus in aviation and where we could really move the needle in some areas around SeaTac Airport and how we maintained the airport. That's where everything began. That improvement culture. The uh, really wanting to really think about plan, do, check, and act was really our focus and has evolved since then all across the port. We've moved from just being at aviation to being in our maritime area, as well as our corporate headquarters at Pier 69 in downtown Seattle. We're really doing everything we can to bridge the gaps to help people be able to have the power to do improvement in the areas that they have control over. And could you launch the poll, please? I'm curious, and we're curious, what percentage of employee work of your employee workforce is engaged in lean process improvement at your organization? Would you say zero to 25%, 26 to 50%, 51 to 75%, or 76 to 100% of your organization? We figure we are approximately about 50% of our organization is engaged 
and we're heading up into the 70 percentile over the next six to eight months. So please click on the poll. We'd love to see what your engagement is in your workforce at your organization. Great. Excellent. So a lot of zero to 25 percent and uh, next up would be 26 to 50 percent. This is what we figured. This is about what we've seen at the port and it's a slow go. Um, I'm assuming with some of the other government agencies that I've spoken to and our team has dealt with that it's a slow process, a bureaucracy um, and the way government works is sometimes hard for improvement. So thank you so much for uh, voting there in the poll. Well, that center of excellence that they built 10 years ago then evolved into five people. And um, we spread out across the port. We have different areas of the port that we're responsible for. And we really started to dive in training people on what lean and process improvement was. Um, really focused on our maintenance areas um, in aviation and in maritime. And really we're thinking about transactional details around the routes they did for um, processing, or excuse me, the routes they did around maintaining the airport when they were dealing with the boiler shop or electricians or mechanics. And the same thing on maritime, really trying to understand where was the waste and help them identify the waste as much as possible. So things were going pretty well. We were getting some leeway. Things were moving forward, slow but sure. Then we developed what we called a lean specialist program. It still exists today. Um, we develop people to facilitate improvement. We have a two-day training program that we started out with. We had them ha pick up improvement with their, lead with their particular leaders and really think about something they could improve and finalize within a six-week improvement time. Then we asked those folks after they went through the training, they did their six week improvement and we certified them as lean specialists that every year they would do one improvement to be recertified. In that initial lean specialist cohort, we had 12 people out of the whole entire organization that participated. And over the years, that number has dropped of that initial cohort with people being promoted, people leaving the port, et cetera. But what we do know is, is that training folks within their de departments and teams gave the teams permission and power to be able to improve things they have control over. And that was our real goal, is if we could continue to build that spider web of people who understood process improvement and lean, that they could be doing improvement day to day as a part of their regular work, they could build improvement teams, they could do improvements on their own, that we could continue to build that muscle and spread across the port. So what did we see? There was some improvement over time. We saw large and small scaled improvements happening and our certified lean specialist numbers went up and down. So we'd have people leave the port, they were promoted, they got too busy, maybe resources in their departments got tight and so they weren't really tied into lean at, for a while and they could come and go sometimes. And we found that our program was not sustainable. We really struggled getting people to be doing improvement on their own continually after that training. So we developed some mentoring. We really tried to hone in and meet with people monthly. Where were they at? What were they going through? What challenges were they having? And then we saw that we were able to go from that one initial aviation focus to a spread of four departments of the port focused on improvement. Still not that much probably within that 25% that most of you said in the poll. What came next? Retirements, promotions, and then COVID hit. What were we going to do? And then with all of that, we went from our five people in the, in the um, Center of Excellence of Process Improvement down to two of us. And we really had to think about what we were going to do to maintain process improvement, one number one, through COVID remotely, and number two, to continue to build that process improvement muscle with our three to five year plan. So of course, Mural, online whiteboard, we just, we swooped in, 
and absorbed it and was able to continue our improvements, also continuing to build our lean specialists. But we still were not there. We we're still challenged with the sustainability, with people's resource change changes, and struggling to really continue to keep those lean specialists where they need to be level-wise and growth. So did we really have a problem or were we imagining it? Well, we, you know, we can all think we have problems and not necessarily go dive into it, but in process improvement, what do we do? Let's go talk to people and find out what was going on. So even though our team did not know the customer experience or the why, we decided we needed to talk to some folks and find out what was going on. What did we learn? Well, we found out that leaders who were lean specialists were no longer able to commit time to process improvement. Leading and facilitating improvement teams was a challenge for them. There was a lack of goals. So although the higher level executive team says we are committed to this work, do one improvement annually or an innovation, we really wanted to figure out how to get goals all the way down to the front line so that people could own this and feel excited about it. We needed to figure out how to make improvement part of the daily work. I didn't no longer wanted anyone to feel like it was a bolt on thing they had to do. And then small improvements were happening, but they weren't being shared. So we had lots of small wins, but people didn't know about them across the port. And we also found that maybe things that were being improved in maritime could also happen in aviation, but they didn't know about each other's improvements. And so we found that that improvement then was not sustainable because they weren't able to tell anybody about it. So they weren't getting excited. They weren't getting the recognition they needed. And we really needed to think about all these things together. So we did voice to the customer. We went and did gamble walks. We spent time with people trying to understand their, their experience in our program. And we had to do some adjustments. So that current state, before we talked to everyone, we were the center of, center of excellence and we were just feeding lean specialists all over the organization. We were training people up, we were mentoring them, and we were really just kind of shoving on them to get their improvements done so they could be certified so that we could check mark the box that we'd accomplished our goal. Well, this was not sustainable and it was not gonna move the needle across the organization, nor was it gonna help our efforts in making the port a high performing organization. So we really needed to hone in on what we were going to focus on. I talked to you about the Lean Specialist Program. Like everywhere, we have our C-suite, our executives. A little different at the port is we are also have um, elected officials, our commission above the executives. And then we have middle management. Well, our executives are so busy and so strategic, we knew right away that was not an area that we were going to be able to move the needle on. Prior experience, consultants, it was just not gonna happen anytime soon. And so we already knew we were focusing 80% of our time on lean specialists. And so the next step was to really dive in and help our middle management really build their muscle so that they could develop lean leaders across their organizations. And that's where we decided to come up with our lean champion leader creation. So the center of excellence then, instead of just filtering these lean specialists constantly, we started to develop directors in middle management. We used different programs like Katie Anderson's Leading to Learn, Learning to Lead program. We had an accelerator where we really taught them leadership skills in CPI and lean. And then we had them set goals for themselves for the year and quarterly so that they could focus on what their team was going to be doing and how it related to the work that they already do. And so really being able to get directors and middle management to understand that the stuff that they were doing, the KPIs, strategic planning, getting people to CPI trainings was all part of their regular work, developing people, encouraging people, training people. So how do they set goals around those things they're already doing to also develop their process improvement muscle in their teams. Then ultimately building their lean specialists up, doing more improvements, trimming the waste, and getting those frontline improvements repeatable and sustainable. So we were super excited about this. We had several lean specialists that were now leaders and we were able to convert them into this program. We gave them the criteria and we were able to have uh, quarterly toll gates with them 
so that we could stay on top of where they were at and help them get through all of their barriers. So what does a lean champion leader need to do? Assure their work is aligned with leader standard work. Number one rule, strategic planning. What are their goals for their teams? KPIs, how are they gonna measure those goals? People development and respect for people, top of the list. Really prioritizing development for their folks so that they could really continue to identify ways and improve their systems. Make things visual, make things visible. Making sure that everyone is able to know what's going on and everything is transparent. And then utilizing those folks to improve the work, daily work, cross-functional work, and the systems and the processes that they manage every single day. And then we asked them to meet with us for quarterly toll gates to assure that they were on track or if they weren't, what was happening so that we could help them break some barriers down and continue to reach their goals. Then we had a plan. We had a plan to set and document each of these champions goals. So we met with each of them. We helped them create their plan and then set up that toll, that toll gate and really understand their gap analysis so they could dive in and fully be able to be on top of what's happening, but not feel like they have extra work. And then we were able to implement. We immediately had 26 champions who all committed to this work that covered 13 departments. So here we're farther along than we were and that quarterly toll gates are going extremely well. We have a problem right now with resources in some departments as everyone hiring has been a challenge and those leaders have been able to shift and adjust, check and adjust like we try to do and really better understand what they need to do to continue to engage, even if it's on a minute scale, that they're still talking and breathing and moving the needle in CPI, which is continually helping their teams and their people in development. And so with that, I wanted to set up the case of where we were going. And I'd like to introduce our first champion leader who's here with us today, Jermaine Murray. And Jermaine is an amazing ambassador of equity, diversity, inclusion at the port. He's gonna talk about some of the improvements he's been able to do in his port construction services and what being a lean champion leader at the port can help you do across equity, diversity, and inclusion, as well as productivity with employees. Jermaine. All right, thank you, Penny. Next slide. <clears throat> Why CPI in port construction services? Well, if we always do the things that we always, the way that we always have, I believe these are missed opportunities to explore doing something, whether it be because it's the right thing to do or whether it's more fair, or maybe we can be more efficiently. I can tell you why I choose CPI. I wanna build a culture of lean and continuous process improvement within the Port of Seattle, and more specifically within PCS department. In the next few slides, I'll walk through about eight reasons why I think PC why I think CPI is critical, important, and necessary to me as a leader. First, I wanna create a new culture that's open to change and introduce others to change mindset. Second, I wanna advance lean training in our department. Next, I wanna develop lean specialists and champions as Penny described previously. Four, I wanna increase employee engagement to facilitate improvements. Five, I choose CPI just for the engagement, employee engagement, including the representative workers. They're the actual boots on the ground. Next slide. Number seven, I choose CPI because I wanna be more efficient and increase production. And eight, I choose CPI because I want to become a more equitable organization and department and seek opportunities to address the many areas needing change. Now I wanna stop and talk about this for a quick moment. I've been asked, what does equity have to do with continuous process improvement? Okay, fair question. But let's think about this for a moment. As an example, in Port Construction Services, we have approximately 30 represented employees. Of those 30, three people are people of color and one is a woman in the trades. 
Now, in my opinion, that's a clear and obvious disparity. Now, this isn't to say we're doing something wrong, but this is an opportunity to do things better or differently. That's what CPI is all about, exploring ways to do things differently with hopes of a different outcome. If it doesn't work, we'll adjust and we'll get it right. So I believe we can apply CPI to hiring practices, recruitment and outreach. We can establish guidelines to ensure there's a diverse panel when hiring. We can openly talk about potential biases. We all have un unintentional biases. So by talking about them, we become aware and we can attempt to remove them. Within the last two years in Port Construction Services, we changed two names of positions to make them less gender specific and make them more welcoming to all genders. We applied CPI methods to change general foreman to general supervisor and foreman to field supervisor. Next slide. Challenges we faced in Port Construction Services. Resistance to change ideology. As Penny mentioned, we had COVID impacts, lack of resources, internal movements, promotions, retirements, time commitment, the time that it takes to dedicate towards CPI. We had conflicting working hours, mostly impacting the representative workers. Next slide. In 2021, we began by implementing CPI with an established department goal and expectation requiring the entire Port Construction Services Department to acquire lean specialist certification or we required employees to lead or participate in one continuous process improvement project by the end of the year. Next slide. We followed on to this goal in 2021, the goal and expectation by jumping right into full implementation mode in 2022. We did this by requiring engagement and participation of the entire department on the following CPI projects. We wanted to reestablish a filing structure, procedure for project estimating. We wanted to better track labor hours for reporting and accuracy. Our closeout process, SOPs, developing and implementing a process to communicate employee performance. We also wanted to establish a way of tracking people hours, actuals versus estimating. Next slide. In Port Construction Services, we also completed a design, pro, or excuse me, what has our progress been this far? In Port Construction Services, we completed the design and construction process map. We've developed and revised SOPs. We've participated in the airport shutdown authorization process and CPI initiative. We've created a new position of a cost estimator. We've restructured our project controls and business operations group. We created a new construction coordinator slash scheduler position. We've created a new assistant manager slash superintendent position. And we've added workstations and mobile devices to all our representative workers so that they have access to development and training activities. Next slide. We also have now ensured that there's a diverse hiring panel when hiring. We've added equity moments to all meetings to provide a safe place of vulnerability. We've gained approval to explore for a new Port Construction Services field office for our representative workers. We've implemented internal promotion process and can account for four internal promotions within the last two years. We've also reduced, reduced some of the disparities that I spoke about previously uh, between gender within a department. And more importantly, we've had more employee engagement in the CPI initiatives. What I have to tell you is the greatest takeaway from CPI and Port Construction Services is the inclusion and in team building. That part where everybody feels valued, involved, heard, and more importantly, employees feel like their input matters. People are more likely to accept change if they can be a part of the solution. And this is why. CPI is, is important and necessary in Port Construction Services. With that, I will uh, shift over to, uh, to Jessica. Next slide. Thank you so much, Jermaine. 
Um, and now I'd like to introduce our second champion leader who's here today to speak on behalf of the maritime side, Jessica Joyce. And Jessica has been around since the beginning when I was talking about those beginning efforts um, in the aviation. And so I'd like Jessica to jump in. Jessica, can you talk about going from lean specialist champion leader and all of your efforts and I'll pass it over to you. Thanks, Penny. And thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Um, I started my lean journey. Um, well, first, let me just say a little bit about marine maintenance. So I've worked in marine maintenance for 24 years. Uh, what we do here, we're an organization of about 150 employees, about 115 of those employees are represented workers. We maintain all the waterfront Port of Seattle properties from Shoshua Bay Marina all the way down the Duwamish Waterway in downtown Seattle. Um, it's a lot of ground to cover. Um, and our workforce is, is a diverse and skilled workforce. We, we have 14 different clapboards craft disciplines, um, 12 different unions that we work with. So it's a lot of balls in the air that we're following. So go ahead and forward the slide, Penny. So my first lean project um, for marine maintenance was back in 2014. Um, it was my first exposure to lean. Um, and it really was around the frustration around how many different ways our crews would get work. Um, as you can see on the left, that diagram is um, the several different customers and methods in which they asked our folks to do work for them. I think there was a total of like 364 different potential ways that work could get to us. This led to incorrect asset cost tracking. Um, our work orders were very bad data, um, which is one of my pet peeves. I'm a data geek at heart. So um, that bothered me a lot. But for, from the crew perspective, they weren't getting the information that they needed to be successful. It took a lot of time for them to go back and clarify what they were being asked to do because there was no standard process. So to solve this problem, we got all the stakeholders, representatives from all the stakeholder groups on the maritime division in a room. So there was people from our operations department, from our real estate um, department. We had some of our crew, um, crew chiefs were there and some of our crew members were there. We had all the, all the people that were there um, to try to figure out how to do this. We employed lots of different lean things, lean tools. We process mapped, we used fishbone diagrams. We wanted to eliminate the waste and make a more streamlined, simplistic process to get better data. So the outcome of this is what's on the right-hand side is we created an intake um, center of excellence. We're always gonna have our dispatch urgent things that have to happen. And we're always gonna have after hours things, but intake is where everything else funneled through. So non-urgent requests. It's, it, it allowed us to have more consistent data in the way that work orders were being entered into the system. It was way less steps and way less um, going back and forth between requesters and crew chiefs to try to get the information. And it provided a standard process um, to allow that information to flow more freely to the crews. So I certified as a lean specialist officially in 2019. Um, in 2021, um, I got a new director, a new boss. Um, and in 2022, he, he is very passionate about lean as well. Um, in 2022, these are the goals that he had for our department. What I would say to this is, I think innately maintenance employees are problem solvers at heart. It's, it's just ingrained in their DNA. It's how we think. We think about how do we make this better? How do we make this more efficient? Um, so his ability to apply some focus on this and, and set these goals out for every employee at Marine Maintenance, I think has made a difference. I, he wants us to adopt a mindset of continuous process improvement, um, to use the tools to standardize things. So his expectations were that everybody goes to training, all 150 of us, that we attend CPI events, that we grow more lean specialists and that we have a lean champion. So that being said, um, I am one of those lean, or lean champions in training, um, along with Delmas Whitaker, who is our director. Um, and we created a team of lean specialists and lean specialists in training here at Marine Maintenance. Um, 
to, to really start focusing in on how we engage our department in lean initiatives and process improvement. So here we are. This is our original theory is our idea boards. We wanted people to tell us what was bugging them. Um, this is, to me, this is a more simplistic way to see it. It's not a picture and it's not all the fanciness. It's, I wanted it to be simplistic just to kick off. What's bugging you? Let's not talk about what's, what's an idea for improvement. Let's talk about what's bugging you. Let's fix it. So um, we created these really basic science, just straight up, here's an idea, here's who's going to do it, this is when we're committing to do it by, and this is um, how we're going to track completion. We huddle every other week, um, and this team that um, on the previous slide, to discuss these things and make updates and review um, any new ideas that are submitted. So next slide, Penny. So this is what the board looks like today. So as you can see, we are actively working things. We just started this about a month and a half ago. So people are submitting stuff and they're wanting us to, um, which is great, it's engagement, right? The first completed card we had was that we didn't have a parking lot <laughs> to put ideas that we couldn't focus on right away or that needed more um, participation from others. So that was our first win, if you will, in the, with this new board is we got a parking lot. And that was pretty cool to be able to put that in the project's completed pile. The last thing we want to do is we want to celebrate. We want to celebrate the stuff that we are already doing because we are doing it every single day. And these are just really small little things that we've been able to do this year. Um, just a snippet of those things. For example, our our, our shop is pretty big and our plumbers and our um, laborers are kind of in a remote area and they were having to walk all the way into the building and across the building to go to a sink to wash their hands. And so we were able to install sinks in their areas. We have plumbers on staff. So they were able to get sinks installed, which is saves them a ton of steps and it makes them feel better and they can be clean more often. I think it, it's, a, it's a morale builder really for them. Um, secondly, we... Um, we there's a, a remote space they work at at our corporate headquarters that was really unorganized so we spent a little money bought a few office supplies and did some cleanup and it's a it's a more organized space that makes them feel that they can be more productive and then lastly um the example here is we implemented a new um, fleet capital purchase project um, system using nexus which is an in an in um, house built software and it has drastically decreased the amount of time it takes to create a capital project um, and track the costs associated with that project. So next steps for us is that we really want to um, invite more people to come with us when we huddle and use that bug me board. Um, we, we're getting a little bit of participation, but I think we've, I think we've only huddled three times. Um, so um, just getting more people engaged. Um, we also want to start, right, we've been focusing on small wins this year. Next year, we really want to dive deeper into bigger projects. For example, it's time to do some PDCA on our work order process. And, and as we talked about originally, that's a maritime division wide project. So that's going to take a little bit more planning um, and a little more focus with a lot more people. So we are planning to tackle that review in 2023. We are also doing a refresh on our fuel island, which is going to create some efficiencies for us as well. And then we want to huddle up in our north um, operations office. Uh, we have a remote site that some of our folks work out of, and we want to have a huddle with them too and give them an opportunity to participate. All right, Penny. Back to you. Thanks, Jessica. And so some of the things we've seen this year since we've implemented the Champion Leader Program is we've seen an increase in improvements and benefits to the port. We've seen an increase in participation in lean training events and increased lean specialist candidates. And I think that, and I'll let Jermaine and um, Jessica pipe in as well, jump in. But what are you seeing around the engagement of your folks? It seems like now that we have a focus and you all are committed, and Delmas is committed, your leader, uh, Jessica, that 
folks are it seem to be more committed and more feeling more of this improvement team. And what would the two of you say? I'll go ahead and uh, answer that first. I'd say the the engagement has definitely gone up from what what we initially seen in 2021. And one good thing um, was to try to get that low hanging fruit, the easy win, show folks that this is well worth their time. Um, and it's been real beneficial and, and more people are wanting to get involved. Great, thanks Jermaine. Jessica? Uh, I would agree. I think it's, it's definitely by highlighting some of the things that people have already done and identifying that, that's CPI. Adding a sink into your work location is CPI. And it's just innately how they think. And so I think it's turning the way that they perceive what they're doing every single day into continuous process improvement. And, and so I think with the board, they are also seeing that we are working on things and that if they put something up there, it's visible, it's transparent, and they can see that we're working on it. That's great. Thanks to both of you for that. Well, that's the end of our like official slide. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, there's a couple questions I know that came up in the Q&A that um, it'd be great. And the, the one thing I did wanna point out is, Jermaine, could you go ahead and share, I think you answered in the Q&A thing, but could you go ahead and share about equity moments and what that does also around lean and process improvement? Because I think there's a component that equity, we're really doing a lot of intersectionality around lean and equity, diversity, and inclusion. And we really truly believe at the port that those two things go hand in hand for true systems change and really being able to shift the needle and become um, an anti-racist organization that those two things have to work together. And so I'll let Jermaine jump in and if you'd share maybe what you said in the chat and a little bit more would be great. Yeah, so basically what um, an equity moment is for us in PCS, and I think for a lot um, across the Port of Seattle, is, is just basically a time um, where we've established that this is a state safe space where we encourage um, employees to talk about whatever it is that they want to bring to the table. I mean, this honestly can be the, the, the most... Um, the best feedback has been the personal stories, sharing personal experiences, things that you have experienced in your life and being vulnerable as a leader to share those things with the team. Um, it really um, has been beneficial. It really has um, enabled others that um, you probably would never hear their voice. And, and instead, now we're finding that more people are sharing stories, especially when someone hears a story that's either similar or maybe it's just disbelief that that's something that you've had to experience. Um, equity moments can be about race. They can be about gender. It could be about how you feel about the environment, whatever it is that you want to bring to the table. And if you have nothing, um, the only ask is that we we ask the, the whoever's participating in the meeting, you know, is there anything that um, anyone would like to share for an equity moment? Thanks, Jermaine. And we use YouTube a lot. There are amazing videos out there on anti-racism, on homophobia. I mean, all the subjects that impact equity, diversity, and inclusion and belonging, you know, always, you can totally reach out to the three of us and we can send you ideas, but there's a lot of great conversation starters um, related to equity, diversity, inclusion, and lean process improvement, um, and really like root cause racism with DeAndre Wardell. There's just so many great resources out there. So I think Rachel's going to help us maybe with the Q&A. Yeah, hi, thank you, that was wonderful. Um, we have a, a few more questions um, folks posed to you all. Um, Ashley Scott wanted to know, what were the kinds of barriers that the champions ran into? Were there any common themes there? Sure, I'll, I'll just say one thing and then I'll let Jermaine and Jessica. One of the biggest things we've had this particular year is really resources. We have one team that had um, five people and they're down to two and they're just trying to manage their work. And so it's been really hard for engagement, um, but they have still been able to just manage through and find little tiny ways to keep moving forward. So I'd love for Jermaine and Jessica to jump in. I, I would say just um, initially resistance to change. Um, some folks aren't open to change. Even, even myself, you know, I use a good example. When I go to Starbucks, I order a white chocolate mocha and it's that all the time. 
Uh, somebody can encourage me to order something else and, and I just don't want to. I'm used to this. This is what my mind has said. I want a white chocolate mocha. Um, so I think really um, being getting folks to be open-minded um, to the possibility of change, um, that has been the biggest barrier. Uh, it's it's something that can be overcome, but it, it it's uh, it's been challenging. And I would agree with both of those, but would also add, this is just another flavor of the month that they're having to jump through. And that perception that I think a lot of our employees get around initiatives that we had, we got lots of initiatives. Um, and so trying to overcome that and put our money where our mouth is. And I think that that's what we're really trying to do with our bug me board and being transparent about, yes, let's talk about these things and let's work on them. And maybe I'll add one more, um, developing a relationship that's based on trust. A lot of employees just don't trust managers and leaders. And, and, and that's been equally as challenging as just um, building that, that relationship, professional relationship, so that employees actually know that they can trust the things that you are saying. Yeah, that's really good. And I think when we really do our monthly trainings for our champion leaders and we, we partner with leadership development team at the port, really talk about empathy, respect for people, kind leadership, another, it's a Karen Ross thing, but all of these components really help us be a better organization, be better leaders and really be able to come combat these kind of barriers that happen. And I will say that the equity moments help with that trust building. If, if you can, uh, get to employees and let them know that they can tell you something personal and it stays within that team, oh boy, will they trust you real quick and, and they open up to you. Thank you. Um, the next question, uh, Alenka is wondering, does the Port of Seattle share the lean and continuous improvement learnings with other Washington ports? So we do share with uh, the Harbor Masters group. Um, and then we also have a monthly check-in with Port of New York and New Jersey and um, also Vermont. And so we're trying to really build out um, a way to connect with other government agencies. So I loved hearing about your, the thing you mentioned at the beginning of this, Rachel, I think maybe you mentioned it, but having the group come together to share. So, but yes, we do. Awesome. Um, Yingying wants to know, can you talk about the folks who are working to address the problem statements and implement ideas? Um, I am trying to better understand the structure of roles for the lean program. Um, and are you, I wonder, meaning from the ideas system or from, so we have a couple of different things. I'll just kind of touch on a few things and I'll let Jessica touch on the bug me board. So the lean specialists really look at everything from a waste perspective, more of like A3 thinking, um, identifying problem statements with their sponsors and with teams, and then working through eliminating waste and building out new processes. We've done some eight-step problem solving. It doesn't go as well at the port. The port wants to be, some things they want things to go really slow in process, or not in process, but in decision-making. But in process improvement, they are not convinced unless we can make it happen really quickly. And so eight-step problem solving was, it kind of fell flat. Um, at the port. And so we do a, just a lot of current state process mapping, identify a problem with gap analysis, current state process mapping, identifying what we call angry clouds or waste, what's not value added, and then building out new processes. We have some new things that we'll be touching on next year, but that's really how we hone in. So we have sponsors for those improvements um, and the teams are identified and they build a charter just like we would typically in lean. We've just had to be really creative with our problem solving at the port so that we could get this to stick. Um, where your Demaic and your eight step problem solving was just too much for people to absorb yet. And Jessica, do you wanna to touch on um, the bug me board side? Yeah, it's, I, the bug me board side is really, it's that, it's that core team that we have right now that is primarily working on some of those initiatives, but we do bring people in as we need to for expertise, if you will, um, or like we had a suggestion that they want us to install a washer and dryer because they don't want to take their dirty clothes home and wash them, which is not a terrible idea. Um, so we had to engage our facility manager in, can we do this and can we fund it? Um, and so we do bring people in, but it is primarily handled and managed by that, that core team right now, which is why we're trying to bring in more. We're trying to train more lean specialists to help us. 
No, great. Yeah, thank you. Um, Christy wants to know when ideas get moved to the parking lot, do you have a way of sharing the why it's in the parking lot? If it's out of scope, out of budget, uh, leadership approval, whatever that reason might be. So right now it's a it's a whiteboard marker and we write down why <laughs> under it under it and I think parking lot doesn't necessarily mean that we're not going to do it. I mean I think what's in the parking lot right now is something that's bigger that's that we just can't manage right now. Um, and so and I think that's what we put like we will work on this in 2023 with the following groups like I think that that's uh, we need a better way to do that probably um, but initially um, that's kind of how we're handling it right now. And there will be times where teams will bring um, call our team in whoever their mentor um, lean person is and say hey this is bigger than us can you get this fit in your priority list to uh, tackle. Got one for you already Penn. Perfect. <laughs> All right, um, Kendra says, thank you. Um, and Crystal wants to know if you could provide any advice or tips on working with colleagues who are not as accepting to the CPI or lean initiatives. Jermaine? Well, that's kind of easy. I guess being the leader of the department, it, you take away the choice. This is this is what we're going to do, lead by example type of thing. But no, I think um, continuous um, outreach, training, the basics, get them to understand why this is the direction that we're moving in. Um, you know, CPI is just so much. I mean, it's you can apply it to equity, your first professional work, you know, work. Uh, you can use it at home if you got children. You know, I've found all sorts of good positive ways to use CPI. And I think just really making that connection with whoever the that that it is that is um, your resist have, facing the resistance. Yeah, and we also found, and this is where I talked about creative problem solving, but if we can figure out what their love language is, right? Mm -hmm. Are they an artist? Are they into mechanics or whatever it is? We can do process improvement in a way that will help them understand the, the benefits and really getting them engaged. So getting everyone around the table, the equity piece is really, really important and the inclusion piece, well, all of it's important, but really making sure that they get a voice as well, so. Thank you. Um, Alexandra would like to know what was the name of the book you mentioned? Was it Root Cause Racism? Um, so the one book I mentioned was Leading to Learn, Learning to Lead from Katie Anderson. And you can look up Deandra Wardell. It's actually not a book, um, but a series of blogs and a website that she did called Hashtag Root Cause Racism. She's actually speaking this week, I think tomorrow actually at the um, AME conference in Dallas. She's amazing and has really brought lean leaders together to tackle uh, racism. Very cool. Um, Alice would like to know if you could talk a little bit more about the quarterly toll gates. Are those basically check-in meetings to see if the team is on track to meet CPI goals? Yeah, so our quarterly toll gates are actually with the champion leader and with our team, um, the CPI you know, Center of Excellence team. And what we do is we look at their committed goals that they set up for themselves for the quarter for their teams and where are they at and really doing that gap analysis and then understanding the story because what we do know is it's all human nature and things like pandemics happen, right? We all know that now. And resources this last few years have been challenging. Hiring at the port has been hard like everywhere else. And so really being able to dive into what's the story of what's happening for them and how we can help them through, that's what the toll gate is about. Um, it looks like Yingying had a follow-up question um, to the one about roles and responsibilities. Um, it was, who are the sponsors within the organization? Are the organization leaders? Um, could you give an example? Yeah, our titles are kind of weird, but we call them anyone who has signing authority can be a sponsor of a project because sometimes our 5S could take some budget that might need to happen, et cetera. So it'd be a leader who has signing authority, which at our organization, um, some senior managers do, and then directors and above. And then oftentimes we have dual sponsors, depending on if multiple teams are involved. Um, and they're the one that Jermaine talked about with shutdown requests. We had two um, directors involved because that was a very large improvement with like 35 members. So they both sponsored it together. 
Um, Aiden is wondering, besides traditional higher education, do any of the panelists have advice for someone looking to move into process improvement related jobs? Anyone, I can, I'll follow up the end. Would the two of you like to say anything? I think there's lots of really good information out in the world about lean um, and educating yourself. Like the Katie Anderson program was amazing. I loved every minute of it and I enjoy it still. I, I, I will read that book over and over again. Um, so I, I just, I think that there's that. I think working, working in an organization that supports lean is also, I think, a plus, um, especially if your manager is supporting development around that. Um, and I've been blessed to have that um, imparted on me. So that would be my advice. Now I would say the same thing, just having that support from the organization, um, like I mentioned, I think in the, the bio, um, you know, I'm a veteran, been in the United States Army. Uh, I think they often refer to it as uh, Six Sigma, Lean, CPI, all the same things. Same thing with the railroad. Um, and so having been with organizations that uh, believe in CPI, Lean, or Six Sig Sigma, um, that's mostly what, where I've gotten my experience and, and knowledge. Yeah, that's great. And there's lots of certification programs out there. Um, that you can get plugged into. There's lots of community programs on LinkedIn. Plug in everywhere you can. If you're women, women in lean on LinkedIn, get involved. You'll learn tons and tons. Um, it's totally worth the time. And also Katie Anderson is doing a government accelerator program, which is partnering many different government agencies together to do that leading to learn, learning to lead. Really amazing program. So lots of options. Thank you so much. Um, John wants to know if there is an online version of the Bug Me board. Uh, I don't personally have one, but I can sure ask my design team. Um, our internal sign shop built that uh, and designed it themselves. So let me see if I, I'll see if I can get a copy of it. And we do have um, several of our idea systems and we've been creative with that one with the bugs that Jessica found, but we do have them in Mural. So if you use Mural or Miro, um, any of those, you can create them in there any way you'd like with the exact same ideas. You can even include a pick chart. Um, so great ways. And we have those in many departments right now who are still doing um, them online. Uh, Christy said, thank you. I've heard the term incubator instead of parking lot and loved that. Um, Brian says, you mentioned early on that there wasn't a lot of sharing between uh, teams happening, even on small improvements. How do you facilitate that sort of large cross-organizational sharing? Well, what we do now is what's called the live report out. And um, every other month, we spotlight as many improvements as we can in a 50-minute period. Last month, Jessica Joyce's team really dove into what they're doing right now. And um, we just highlighted marine maintenance, but a lot of times we have both sides. And so that is a really um, key, pivotal pivotal place for people to share their improvements and the results. And we also now have just had um, one improvement team use SharePoint and build a portal, a CPI portal. So it's another place where people can go search what improvements are out there. Thank you so much. Um, it looks like we are out of time. Um, thank you so much, Penny, Jessica, and Jermaine. This has been a great session. I know I learned a lot. I think this added a lot of value for folks. Um, we'd like to thank everyone for being